ChatGPT can help you with 10 different mental models. Now, if you don't wanna watch the whole video, uh, just screenshot table of contents is right here. These are the 10 different things I'm gonna go through in this video. Um, but I'm also not gonna go through absolutely everything in this document because I'm actually just going to include the document link uh, in the description of this video. So if you wanna read it, uh, copy it, you know, send it to your friends or whatever, you, you just have this document in the description. So um, the reason I made this video was because I think a lot of people have pretty low views of AI and ChatGPT in general, in the sense of they think it's maybe just novelty, it's not anything too useful, um, or it just creates generic garbage. Now, I sat down, I spent several hours thinking about this, and I realized that, well, maybe not realized, but I came up with 10 different mental models or frameworks or biases that ChatGPT can help you with, essentially making you smarter. Okay, all these, these 10 things here and more, if someone's a genius, you know, with 140, 150 IQ, they're gonna have these things already, it's like instinct. They're gonna know how to employ the Socratic method, they're gonna have first principles thinking, which by the way, Elon Musk always talks about, and he's definitely one of these geniuses. And they're gonna, they already have all these things instinctively in their mind. Normal people, the non-Elon Musks of the world, they can use ChatGPT to quickly employ lateral thinking or thinking properly about opportunity cost, essentially making you smarter. I think that's, that's just a no-brainer. And so in the same way a calculator has removed the need to do mental math and Wikipedia and Google has removed the need for just memorizing facts ChatGPT can also help you, uh, removes the need for lower analysis, which frees up your mind to employ higher analysis. So what I mean by that is it's not, it's not like, like these tools are bad things. It's just changes our priority, uh, our focus on where we spend our mental energy. So with calculators, yeah, you spend less time doing the mental math or you know doing it on paper but you spend more time setting up the problem correctly. You know, if it's a math or physics problem, you set up the situation correctly, and then the computation is just done instantly. Same thing with Google and Wikipedia. You don't need to memorize the exact dates for something, and you can spend more time on the analysis, like connecting dates to events and having analysis around these facts. So ChatGPT, it's, it's really the same thing. It helps you outsource, in a sense, the very low level analysis so that you can spend your mental energy and time on higher analysis. So these 10 things are one, the Socratic method. And I have, uh, I have a small description for each one, a nice image, and then an example of me speaking a bit with ChatGPT uh, around this mental framework of uh, lateral thinking, first principles thinking, the Pareto principle, confirmation bias, survival bias, and availability bias, the sunk cost fallacy, opportunity cost, Parkinson's law, the hero's journey, and circle of incompetence. So um, I'm going to talk a bit more about each one now, but uh, if if you want, you can end this video here, go in, in the description and just access this document um, because everything I'm going to go through now is basically you're going you're gonna to see in the document. So first thing is the Socratic, Socratic method. So that's a questioning technique used to stimulate critical thinking. It's just sort of a discussion back and forth using uh, ChatGPT will essentially pretend to be Socrates and ask you thought-provoking questions and essentially help you discover a deeper truth by asking you questions uh, that help you examine your, examine your reasoning and arrive at deeper insights. And I realized that a, a therapist operates very similarly. It's not like they tell you to do something. They just sort of help you explore what you already know in your mind and ask you leading questions. So the Socratic method is quite similar. And you can just very easily have ChatGPT do this for you. 
two, lateral thinking. So I think this is one way, probably one of the best ways that ChatGPT can help you out of these 10 different um, points I have, because it's not necessarily going to be the best at deep thinking, like about one topic, uh, in the sense that let's say a world class expert maybe, but it's definitely the most, let's say lateral mind in the world compared to humans, right? Like it knows the most surface level compared to any anyone else online or not, not online, but in the world, right? So basically lateral thinking is just trying to get to a solution with out of the box thinking. And so ChatGPT, it can easily do that. Like here, help me think laterally about growing my business online. And it actually gave some amazing tips, collaborate with influencers, gamify the experience, leverage user generated content, offer freemium or free trials. A lot of these answers were cut off. Usually ChatGPT ends uh, like after eight points or 10 points. Um, but just in the interest of keeping this document shorter, I cut it off. But you can see these are these definitely are lateral ways of growing your business online. You compare that to first principles thinking where you break down a problem or situation to its fundamental truths. And then I asked ChatGPT, help me think about growing my business from first principles. You see, they're both about growing your business, but this one, since I said first principles versus lateral thinking, this one's the fundamentals, vision and goals, target market, value proposition, building a strong brand, develop a marketing strategy, and then three more. Like these are all fundamentals, which as you can see are extremely different from these. Like these are not fundamentals at all. And so first principles thinking, lateral thinking, uh, ChatGPT can definitely, definitely help you with that. Pareto principle, uh, I, in my opinion, it's not as effective. Um, essentially, this is the 80-20 rule that like 20% of effort leads to 80% of results. Like let's say in a company, the 20% top salespeople get 80% of the sales, something like that. And you find this pattern everywhere uh, in, in the world. And so usually it's not 20-80, but you know, 10-90 or 30-70 or something. Um, and I, you can use ChatGPT to, Ch Chad GPT to ask it to um, go through your schedule, help me realize which tasks are not worth doing. And then it tells you a way, a nice strategy to do that. So identify your tasks, evaluate task importance, determine task results, apply the 80-20 rule, review the remaining tasks. So it's, it's decent. It's not like the previous points, but uh, it definitely can help you with that too. So these are different biases. Confirmation bias is the tendency to favor information that confirms existing beliefs. Survival bias refers to uh, the tendency to focus on successful outcomes while ignoring failures. And availab availability bias is when uh, your decisions are influenced just by easily accessible or memorable information. And ChatGPT can help you combat these biases. Also, this point is also maybe ChatGPT isn't the best at this, just in the sense that you need to first ask it uh, about these biases, uh, these biases for it to tell you. And most people aren't going to think to ask it like, hey, how, how am I using confirmation bias in my business? Right? So you sort of have to be able to meta think and ask it for, for you to be able to take the next step. So maybe this isn't, this isn't the best use. This isn't the most useful. But maybe potentially you can still use it. Like I did find this uh, impressively, uh, I did find this answer more impressive than I thought it would be because here it says um, like confirmation bias in web design business. It explains how I may be doing that. And then it tells me how I can overcome it, which I find pretty awesome. Um, so it tells you like, okay, here's how you, you may be doing uh, or employing survival bias in your web design business. I, by the way, I asked this specifically for my web design business. And then it tells you how to combat that. So that's pretty awesome. Some cost fallacy. That's basically like you look at these two people talking, we need to cut the dead weight or we'll sink. And someone else says, no, we spent a lot of money to buy that weight. So <laughs> it's like the weight is already gone. Um, if you don't want the boat to be gone too, you got to just cut the cut the weight. And so you can ask it, help me apply the sunk cost fallacy to my business. And it just goes through some steps um, 
to help guide you through, okay, where are the sunk costs, separate them from future considerations, evaluate them based on current and future prospects, consider opportunity costs, which right now we're getting seven opportunity costs. So these, these past few points, it's almost like you have a consultant coming to you, to your business, or, you know, if you're not a business owner, just a life coach in a sense, and they just give you, ask you some leading questions and then um, give you some steps, some action steps that you can take. But it's like they're giving you homework. Like they're not gonna tell you, okay, do exactly this because that's never good advice. It's more like, okay, this is what you have to answer for yourself. So it's useful in that sense. It's uh, obviously it doesn't give you the exact answers of what you're supposed to do, but I don't find that that wouldn't be useful if it was a human doing that anyways. So opportunity cost, it's um, basically anytime you're doing something, it's not just the cost of that thing. Like say you're going to school for four years, you're not just paying the 100,000 in tuition, you're also missing out on potentially 100,000 in income that you would have made if you worked those four years. So you can ask, help me figure out the opportunity cost of everything I do in my business. And again, sort of poses as a consultant and asks you some questions, starting with identifying it, you know, determine alternatives, evaluate potential outcomes, so on. So it's useful. It's it, it's like, you know, AI consultant. Parkinson's, Parkinson's law. I like this one just in general. Again, I don't think ChatGPT is going to be the best at this, but this law is actually very relevant in today's day and age uh, because it says that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. So if you, if you have something, a project uh, due in one week, you're going to finish it in one week. If it's due in one month, it's going to be done in one month. So you can uh, you can ask ChatGPT, help me apply Parkinson's law to my business. And it tells you some, again, sort of online consultant advice, set shorter deadlines, prioritize tasks, implement time constraints, emphasize efficiency, delegate effectively. This one's probably the least effective out of the 10, but still it's it's something, you know, it's it's like a AI consultant. This one's my favorite though, easily, the hero's journey. I love the hero's journey because you see it everywhere. Every story we love from Harry Potter to Lord of the Rings to, you know, the story of uh, Jesus in the Bible follows the hero's journey in a sense. Um, call to adventure, supernatural aid, crossing the threshold, abyss, transformation, atonement, return. Now, if you're familiar with the hero's journey, these steps may be slightly different. Um, personally, the way ChatGPT had a, had the, their framework of the hero's journey, I think was even better than this image. And I think that's sort of a, that's how ChatGPT just operates in general it's better than just taking something random online. Like when you search the hero's journey and you look at Google images and you just pick one of the top images that show up and take that, that's gonna be worse than ChatGPT. But ChatGPT wouldn't be better than let's say an expert, like the hero's journey was uh, first conceived by an author, Joseph Campbell, where he went through ancient myths and modern stories and, and broke down the hero's journey into these steps. And so obviously, if you spoke to Joseph Campbell, he would know, way, he would answer your questions about it way better. But ChatGPT will give you a good response, not a great one, but better than something random. So just side thought. Um, but I love this one because I asked it to make a hero's journey in compare, comparing it to starting a business. And so one, the call to adventure, you know, Alex is dissatisfied with their current job, feels a desire for something more meeting the mentor alex encounters a successful entrepreneur who becomes their mentor you should definitely like download this this pdf um or it's not even a download it's just a link that you'll open and uh just read this because it's like wow this is so good i was actually really impressed and you could have chad gpt write your own hero's journey like a you could give it the facts about your life and it could write a hero's journey story or you could even take a story you love like harry potter and ask it to break down the hero's journey into that just for fun um because yeah, it, this this is a very important, I think, mental framework or model that everyone should be familiar familiar with. And ChatGPT can help you uh, can help make it more interesting by applying it to your actual business or your life or your favorite story. Last one, circle of incompetence. Basically, you don't know what you don't know, and ChatGPT can help you reduce that. Um, 
when you know absolutely nothing about something, you can ask a very generic question. You'll learn a bit more. As you learn a bit more, your questions will get better. And then it's a self-fulfilling or no, it's a positive feedback loop where you learn more. So then you ask better questions and then those better questions lead to more knowledge and so on. And so you go from a place of unconscious incompetence to a place of unconscious competence, basically instinct. And um, yeah, when I asked it to help me reduce my circle of incompetence, um, it gives me some strategies to help you. It helped me. Self-awareness, prioritize and delegate, continuous learning, seek mentors and advisors, and some other ones that I caught off. And so yeah, um, overall, I would say ChatGPT just basically makes you smarter. It helps you employ all these mental models, frameworks, remove biases that very smart people already do instinctively, but now you're able to do it just as as a non-Elon Musk. So definitely go to ChatGPT right now, try one of these prompts, and uh, if you want, um, just open this link and you can see, uh, you can read uh, exactly my conversations with, with ChatGPT about these things. All right.